if you have a long trade open, right? So you have a long position open, then how do you exit? How do you go flat when you get a bar in the opposite direction? So for example, right, we have a long signal here. We have up bar, up bar, doji, up bar, up bar, and then we get a down bar, right? A bar in the opposite direction. So how do you flatten your position when you have a long trade open? So, and you can't, so with Bloodhound, um, indicators are not aware of a of trading positions. So there's no way for Bloodhound to know if you're in a long trade or if you're flat or if you're in a short trade, right? It basically, indicators just don't have the ability to know um, if you have a, a position open or not um, so what we have to so what you have to do is you have to take your entry signals and build an exit signal based off of your entry signal right so I'm going to use this entry signal that I just built you know um, um, as as my example here to build an exit signal when we get a bar on the very first bar in the opposite direction of the entry signal. So we are expecting a short signal right there on that bar. All right. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm gonna make a, a copy, right? Because I, I wanna use this as my entry signal to build this exit signal here. So I'm going to make a copy of this logic template here, make a copy of it. There we go. We can see it says copy right there. Um, okay. So yeah, basically we're building a first opposite bar exit signal. Um, or Okay, there we go. So um, exit signal on first um, opposite bar. So uh, let's see, let's get rid of that. So the first thing that we need to do is um, take our, our entry signal here and stick it into a toggle node. The toggle node is typically used to hold on to a signal. You know, hold on to a signal until you need it, you know, later on down the chart, you know, late, you know later on in time. So we can see, I, we are, right, we've got, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so we had a long signal here and the toggle node turned on to a long state, right? And it stayed on this long state until we, until the ADX VMA, you know, reversed to a, a downtrend, right? And then the toggle node flipped and now it's holding on to a short state, right? So. So we need to take our, yeah, so we're taking our, our entry signal, holding on to it until we get to a reversal bar. And so the next, yeah, all right. So I, so we need to reverse this long output to a short, right? Because the exit signal is going to be a short signal, right? So if you want to exit a long trade, you need to generate a short signal. So right now the toggle node is giving us a long output, but for this exit signal, we want it to be a short signal. So we need to reverse it. Um, and there's two ways I can do that. I could use the long short modifier. And I guess, yeah, I'll just pop that in there real quick. And bingo, now you can see the output is short. Right, so everything's been reversed, right? That's one way, but I actually don't need that extra node. I can do it with the toggle node. So on the inputs, I can reverse the inputs here. There we go. So on opposite signal, I'm now turning the toggle node on using an opposite signal and then on signal we're then forcing the signal off right so there we go so when the ADX VMA right when it goes 
when it goes into a long trend, we now have a short output on the toggle node. And so then the next step is I need a bar direction. So let's add that bar direction, right? And so on this down bar, right, we're getting a short output from our bar direction solver. We're getting a short output on this down bar. And so now I just need to combine the toggle node, right? The toggle node has a short output. I just need to combine that with the toggle node. So we grab an AND node. And once we connect the bar direction in there, there we go. There is our exit signal, like so. So, and we also, and again, depending on how your entry signals are set up, you may not need to clean this up, but most likely, typically, you know, with most systems, you need to turn the toggle node off once you get the signal, right? So in other words, if we look at the toggle node, right, once we get to this bar, you know, we then want to turn the toggle node off, right? So we want, we want to get rid of these other long signals after we get our exit signal, right? So we, yeah. And we can simply use the bar direction here to actually reset or turn off, right? Just think of resetting basically as turning, turning these function nodes off, right? So that's a simple way to, to think of a reset is, you know, the, yeah, we have four function nodes that actually have a reset connection. And so the resets there are basically to turn the function node off or reset the function node back to a, a, a zero state again. And so with the toggle node, let's see, we want for the reset. Yeah, I think we want the on signal and turn it off. Um, yeah. So there we go. So now we can see, you know, so again, remember we're, we're looking at the toggle node right now, right? So we can see when the entry signal comes in, right? The green arrows are entry signal coming in. So that turns the toggle node on and then, oh, well, so actually, yeah. If, if you notice the toggle node gets turned off on the on the exit bar here right so if i look at the end node oh look there's no exit signal anymore right and that's because the toggle node is getting turned off on the by the down bar so we need to delay we need to delay the signal going into the reset we need to delay it by one bar and we can do that using the look back node and it's the displacement function here so you can see it's it's set to one bar by default and so a displacement um, ninja traders displacement basically is kind of like a delay mechanism um, so it'll delay all the signals by one bar so if i connect here let's Let's just look at this simply. All right. So if we look at the, you know, connect the look back node up, then on the chart, we can see, look, our, our short output coming from the down bar, right? It's delayed by one bar. And over here where there's a doji, right? Remember, dojis don't have any bar direction. And here's the no output, right? There's no output there 
you know, because doji bars don't have a direction. And you can see it's been pushed over or delayed by one bar, right? So, so we can take this delayed signal and feed that into the reset. And so now let's take a look at the toggle node. There we go. So the toggle node gets turned on from the entry signal, and then the toggle node gets turned off after uh, after our reversal bar. So now when we look at the AND node, there we go. There is our exit signal. There. Okay, and I like to rename these look back nodes. You know, just kind of use shorthand for a displacement of one bar. So that way, that way I know what this look back node is doing for me. So I know that it's just it's using the displacement or you know a delay of one bar. Yeah, just kind of clean that up a little bit. All right. So now let's kind of look through our chart here a little bit. So, all right. So on that down bar, that's our exit. And where's our entry? Yeah, so there we go. So there's our, our entry is on the up bar. And then the exit is on the first down bar. Uh, yeah, same thing over here. So we can see right here. So there's our entry, and then our exit is on that first down bar. There we go. And let's take a look over here. So we get our short entry signal on this down bar, and then, you know, unfortunately right after there was an up bar, and that would be, and that's our exit signal there. Oh, looky here. Okay. So we have a little glitch in the system. So here is our entry signal. And our exit is on the same bar because the entry was on a down bar. Right? The, the long entry signal was on a down bar. And so it fired an exit signal right then and there. So... Um, yeah, so if we wanted to wait until we got to the next bar, right? We'll wait for the next down bar. Let's see here. What? Oh, let's see. What modifications do we need? Um, yeah, I think we can just stretch this out and then in between. Right, the signal. There we go. All right, so coming out of this AND node is our entry signal. There we go. And so we can delay the entry signal going into the toggle node. So let's grab another look back here and connect it up like that. And let's see if that works. Hmm. Let's see. No, that doesn't work either. Um, let's see. Yeah, and that's because, hmm, yeah, that's because this bar direction is just simply, yeah, this bar direction is generating or yeah the this bar direction with the delay is constantly turning the toggle node off so let's see um, right so what i need to do is oh okay uh, let's see yeah i think i can get rid of this i don't think i need that so again what i need to do is when I get an entry signal is to make sure 
that this entry signal actually blocks the reset signal. All right, so if I look at my reset signal, so I'm getting a, a reset, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, right, right. So uh, we're looking at the reset signals here. Yeah, so the reset signal, yeah, I need to block the reset on this next bar here because this is where we want the exit. Yeah, I should mark that. Let's mark that there. Okay, so there's our entry signal, and then we want an exit signal there, but we can see this, sh this short output, right? This is our reset signal, and so it's turning the toggle node off on the bar that we actually want the exit signal. So I need to use, um, so, I, so I need to take my entry signals and use it to prevent or block, I need to, um, yeah, I need to use the entry signals to block my reset signals here. And I can do that, let's see here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm taking my entry signals and I'm delaying them. Right? So this is the this is the entry signal, but it's delayed one bar. So that way I can use this this entry this delayed entry signal to pre to block the exit uh, yeah to block the exit let's see alright so I need to invert that yeah I think I need an inverter hmm mm. let's see not the inverter oh okay so let's try and delay the entry signal by two bars yeah, yeah yeah there we go okay all right so sometimes you just have to experiment and play around and until you get the you know the answer that you, you're looking for there we go all right so what we're looking at here right is i've taken the entry signal and i've delayed it by two bars, right? I actually needed to, to add a two bar delay because, you know, we, we want to turn the toggle node off, right, after the exit signal, right? So we want the exit signal here on this bar, and then we want to turn the toggle node off afterwards, right, on the next bar after. So that means I need a two bar delay, right? So so coming from the entry signal, I need to go one, two bars, and then on the second bar, then allow the reset signal to go through, right? So, right? and again, if we look at this, right? There's my two bar delay. So I have the, the entry signals going into the look back, right, which is taking the entry signal and delaying it over here by two bars, right? But it's a long output. And remember, we're trying to, or I need a short output to reset the toggle node, right? So again, so remember my, uh, my bar direction is what's providing the reset signals, right? So on down bars, we're getting short uh, to reset the toggle node. So I have to take this long signal and reverse it or swap it into a long signal. So that's what this long short modifier is for. So that reverses it from a long to a short. And so now I can combine 
that. So now I can combine those two together. Let's see, I need an AND node. So now when I combine those two together, there is my reset, you know, um, that's been blocked on the exit bar, right? So I took my entry signal and made sh and used my entry signal to remove the reset on the very next bar. So now that can go in there and So let's take a look at the toggle node. Yeah, so there we go. So when the entry signal comes in, the toggle node gets turned on, and it's still on when we get our exit signal. And then the toggle node gets turned off right on the next bar where we want it turned off. So now, let's see here. Oh, it's still not working. Um, oh, okay. So let's see here. I think, yeah, I think what I did is, hmm. All right. So I, I also need, so I've, I've delayed the reset signal. So I now also need to actually delay uh, the exit signal. Um, well, yeah, this get a little more complicated here. I'm probably making this more complicated than um, than was necessary because you know again my you know the kind of the way the question was written you know I don't think I don't think there would ever be a long entry signal on a down bar you know so probably what I'm doing is probably overkill but I'm doing this just to make this a little more uh, generic uh, you know a, a little more usable by by all all situations here. All right, so I think I just need to create. I just need to duplicate this logic here. Now I'm just going to build this out real quick and see if this works. Instead of trying to explain it all. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, wait. No. <laughs> All right. There's a much simpler solution. Okay. And All right. So bef before I explain what I've done here, let me just check the rest of the chart and make sure um, that this is still working. Hmm. All right, so there's our entry. Yeah, now we're, hmm. Oh. So, yeah, unfortunately, so this whole um, series of nodes here, uh, yeah, so what I built earlier only works 
you know, in this situation where you get an entry and then basically your entry bar is also a, an exit bar and an exit bar and an exit bar. So that only works in this situation here, right? And so what I'm noticing here is when I built this complicated um, reset signal is then what happens is we get all these other exits, which actually is probably okay. Um, you know, as I said earlier, typically exit signals don't need to be cleaned up all that much. So this is probably okay um, to leave all these extra exit signals, all these extra exit signals is probably will work just fine. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to see if I could build this out, you know, um, as a as a nice clean universal ex exit signal. I don't think I can. Yeah, we might have come across kind of one of the limitations here currently within Bloodhound. So I, you know, ideally what we really want, ideally, and let me just, yeah, let me just kind of put this all back here. Put that all back together. So I'm just going to keep it in this kind of simple fashion here, the simple thing. So for for you know, ideally, what we want, um, and it's going to take us a while to finally figure out how to do this. But really, you know, the the simple way to think of resetting the toggle node. Right, the simple way of thinking of resetting this toggle node is, well, when we when we get our exit signal, uh, let's see, let's, where's my arrows? There we go. All right, let's go back here where I've got all my arrows. Right, so when we get our exit, when the exit signal, you know, pops up, the simple way to think of that is, well, why not just you know, why not just feed the exit signal back into the toggle node? You know, why not just um, like take this one bar delay, right? Take this AND node and feed it into the look back and then feed that into the toggle and reset it, right? So, you know, that, that would, that's the, you know, uh, the obvious thinking here. But what happens is you create a, um, a feedback loop. So right now, you know, Bloodhound has a protection where you can't, where you cannot take, you know, the output and feed it back into the system. So in other words, like I can't take this AND node and I cannot feed it back into the reset because that would create this infinite feedback loop. Right, so Bloodhound has this protection here um, for infinite feedback loops. And, you know, at some point, we want to be able to create an exception for that, you know, where you can use something like a lookback node, you know, that provides a one bar delay. So that way you don't actually create infinite feedback loops. So, but that is quite a programming challenge to get that all working correctly. So right now you just can't feed back, you can't create feedback loops. And so that's one of the current kind of limitations here, um, you know, when you're building out systems. So, so this is, yeah, um, yeah, this is just as good as we're going to get right now with this exit signal here. So let's see, where was that? Yeah, again, so, so, you know, the limitation here is if your entry signal, you know, is on a bar in the wrong direction, then the exits is just, yeah, the exit signal is just not gonna work, so. 
Oh, unless, actually. Oh. All right. I think I just found a simple solution. Um, sometimes things are so simple that they're not obvious. All right. So let me just build this out here real quick. All right, so let me see if that works. Okay, so it's working right here. So there's my exit signal. But now I need to make sure it didn't mess anything else up. Oh, and here's another situation. So look right here. We have our entry signal right there. And it's on an up bar. And there's our exit signal on the next up bar. And let's see, so here's our entry short, and then there's our exit signal on the first up bar, and no more exit signals. Um, let's see. Yeah, so we know that we got, we have a uh, short entry there, up bar, so there's our exit on the up bar. Yep. So here, this would be our, that would be our entry signal, and then the exit, let's see, yeah, our entry on that bar, exit on the next one. Okay, yeah, there we go. So this seems to be working. Yep, that one's still working. Let's see. Yep, even right here it's working. So we have a long entry on a down bar and then the exit okay <clears throat> so here we go so basically i built two exit signals um yeah so uh, let, let me explain here all right so we have our you know, original exit signal, right? That uses the toggle node, right? So again, you know, the original system using the toggle node, you know, it works great. You know, it works great when there's a handful of bars, you know, in between the, ex the entry and the exit, right? There's an unknown number of bars in between the entry and the exit. Um, all right, so this works, you know, for that scenario, you know, but then when we get to these situations where you have an entry on a, you know, entry on a bar in the wrong direction, and so then you want an exit right after, you know, bingo, there's our exit right after, you know, on the next down bar or if the next bar is a down bar. And that's using, you know, basically this logic right here. Yeah. So what I've done, so, you know, for this exit logic here, you know, the way it works is we take the entry signal, you know, which is delayed by one bar, right? We have this one bar delay. And then I put it, into a long short modifier so that I swap the signals right so remember this this is providing the entry signal so then I reverse it or swap it into the exit signal direction and then just wait for you know the the bar direction and then I you know combine it with the bar direction right and so so the the entry is on a down bar but also but more importantly the next bar right so this entry on the down bar you know messes up 
this logic, right? So this logic doesn't work in that situation. This exit, yeah, this exit system here doesn't work in that, that situation, you know, but the second, you know, the second exit logic does work in that situation. So we get the entry. The entry signal is delayed by one bar, so it's moved over here. And then the long short modifier reverses the signal direction. And then the bar direction, right? So as long as it's still a down bar, right? So the bar direction makes sure that this the second bar is still a down bar. And then when the two right agree, there we go. We get our exit signal out of that that and node. All right, so we actually have two logics here or two systems, you know, um, generating exit signals, you know, um, built for different dis different scenarios there. And then of course we just combine them together with an OR node at the end. So that is a uh, fairly universal exit sig exit signal system when you get a bar in the opposite direction of the trade.